Hello. It has been a very, very long time since I've posted, and um, <laughs> lately I've been getting comments to that effect. Where are you? Are you alive? Are you okay? Are you still doing art? Things like that. Yes, <laughs> I'm still doing art. Um, I've been very busy, actually, for the past few years. Um, that's a good thing. And it's just really easy to not, like, take a step back and make a video, you know. I mean, any of you who have made a YouTube channel, um, you can uh, attest to how much time it takes to, to commit to that. Um, this, this one doesn't take nearly as much time as the other channel that me and my family used to run um, on a daily basis. And, you know, we did exorbitant amounts of editing and it was crazy. It almost killed us. <laughs> uh, yeah, mentally. Um, anyway, where am I going with this? Uh, there's no better time than just right this second to, to just jump right back into it because no time is ever going to be just right. So just going to do it with all its imperfections, including the piano being uh, pounded in the background. <laughs> the, the girls have some a whole bunch of friends over and they're just having a blast. So if some people or several groups of people come in and out of the studio while I'm making this, uh, that's, that's, the, that's just what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, so uh, right now I'm working on a little painting. Uh, this is going to be uh, one of my entries for the American Impressionist Society um, miniature show. Hi. Um, and I've, I've gotten going with it. I, you know, I'm quite, quite into it now, so uh, you don't get to see the very beginnings. But you do get to see, and I'll show you more of this, that it can start out pretty impressionistically, or, well, that's, that word is uh, debatable. It's, it, that's interchangeable with, we'll call it loose. It's very loose, um, but you can still see what's going on. You can see where the light is coming from. You can see what the forms are doing. You can see the, the tilt of the head, the, the gesture in general. Um, both of those things, the, the light and the gesture, are super important for a painting. And of course, you can see my reference there. That's uh, my oldest daughter and the second youngest daughter um, a, a while ago, a few years ago. But uh, anyhow, um, so the way I go about this is, and again, I'll try to, the way I've started this video, I actually can't um, flip it around here. <laughs> Maybe I can. Let me, let me try real quick. Nope, I can't. Okay, so I'll probably just have to hold it here and do my very best. But generally, I'm not, I'm not really going for much detail in the beginning stages of a painting like this. And I don't, I'm not claiming that I always start out the painting, uh, painting the same way every time. But this is kind of the way that I prefer to do it, which is that I'm not really doing details. I'm just doing big shapes, and then I slowly get smaller and smaller shapes. And where I see um, little color changes in something, uh, for example, in, in a photo, um, th and this is kind of a beginner mistake, and this is something that people learn more and more as they go along and paint plain air more and more is you'll start to, to realize that things like this are not gray and they're not really black. In, in, in real life, this would be a, like a warm purple up here and a, and a cooler purple down here because it's reflecting the, the sky and there's gonna be some yellows in here because it's reflecting the, the light that's shining down from the, from the river and reflecting back up. And this would have green in it and, and blues and reds and things. You know, whereas in the picture, it just shows up as gray and black. Um, so if you learn anything from me, uh, plain air paint, plain air paint a lot. Paint from life, in other words, it doesn't have to be plain air, but paint from life, even if it's a still life or something. But if you can go outside and do it, you'll get, um, which is the essence of plain air painting, you'll get a lot more of those uh, interesting light things happening, you know, with the color of the sky and bright reflected lights that you just kind of won't get indoors. Anyway, going back to my point, um, 
when, when I see tiny little uh, changes, for example, right here, I can see over here in the shadow of this hat, it gets just a little bit more yellow. Well, I'm gonna kind of emphasize that. I'm gonna look for things like that all over the place. Um, I know intuitively that this isn't going to be all the same, and I know that this isn't going to be all the same as each other. You know, if I were to paint it just like I see it, I'd paint it all black, or if I'm really creative, you know, or pretending to be really creative, I'd make it purple instead of black, but that's just not the reality of it. There's, there are little nuances in that, all kinds of color changes, but the value does actually stay pretty, pretty close uh, to the same all the way across. So keep the value strong and readable in a given area, in a, in a shadow, for example, uh, compared to the light. You don't want light, uh, the values in the light areas to accidentally look like values in the dark areas. So you want to keep them separate, but be extremely various, uh, give a lot of variety to those areas in color, but not in, it does, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Keep the value the same, keep the uh, colors interesting. Constant, it's a constant uh, goal. Um, I was gonna say battle, which I guess it is, but I think it's more, more fun than a battle would be. Um, anyway, so having said all that, why don't I go ahead and just show you what I would do with the remaining uh, white parts here. And again, I'll try my very best to hold this in a way that you can see it. I am not looking at my screen right now, so I'll have to, if I go off course, just be patient with me and I'll get back on. Okay. First of all, just so you can see, I'm gonna mix up just literal gray. Okay, there's gray using nothing but black and white. I've got ivory black and titanium white. So that's a true gray, okay? Nothing wrong with that. Um, it, it's, you know, basically in the right value family as what I want there. And I, you know, I may actually choose to use that in a couple spots, but I'm, but I'm going to treat it as a color, not as a gray. Gray is a cop-out. You don't want to use gray unless there's a really good reason for doing it. And I treat my grays more, more often than not as... Um, as just a, a cool blue because compared to that yellow for example it is quite blue but let's add some real colors in there so purple um, you know let me just let me just put some purple in there just to cover this area real quick I'm not using any medium right now and I rarely do but in this case, and just to speed things along so I can show you better, I'm just gonna cover this whole thing up using a little, tiny bit of medium. And if you have seen my other videos, you know that my medium is usually just paint thinner. I don't usually add an oil or anything like that to this. Okay, I'm just gonna cover this just so I can get, get rid of the white, okay? Does that look all right? Yeah, that looks all right. Does that work? Sure, it works. But let's make it more interesting. Okay, I know from painting plain air that reflections um, from distant, well, more f more from nearby things, uh, cast their their reflected light in in different directions. You know, things that are down below here are gonna that are like lit up over here, are gonna cast their reflected light up here on these overhangs because they're they're facing the, each other. So I'm gonna add some browns in there. Oops. This, speaking of difficult battles here, I'm battling this camera. Um, so put this brown in there. Um, you can see that I'm still trying to keep it relatively, you know, the same value. This brown isn't necessarily uh, significantly lighter or darker than, than here. Um, technically, it might be a little lighter because it is um, lit up 
but then again, so is this. This is lit up, in essence, from the blue sky that's above. Okay, and there's some trees around too, but more or less, it's lit up by the sky. And yes, I know that's confusing because it is in shadow, but what light it is receiving is cool. So basically the color of the sky, um, you know, with some, some nuances. I don't want to, you know, I could, I could get kind of nitpicky and show some, some greater variety, but I think if I were to do that, it would start to lose its power as, as a big shape, and we don't want to do that. So I'm mixing up just a, a relatively neutral. Yeah, let's see, that's too warm. Yeah, some purple and blue to that. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty neutral. I'm just going to do some, a few little spots where I want to kind of define some, some of the things that are happening here. Let me hold it a little bit more straight like that. Okay, just some, oh, like rocks and twigs, things like that. I just want to give some little indicators that something is in there. I'll put some darker warms over here. Hi, I'm making a video, it's okay. <laughs> if you need me, I can still. We used to have a box of newborns that the baby brought up. Oh. Do you know where they went? Um. Anyway, you think what are you doing? Oh, I'm making a video of this painting. <laughs> the neighbors. So, yeah, I'm just putting a few more little indicators in here. Again, trying to add variety, but not, ooh, yeah, not, not letting it get away from me too much. And it's a balancing act, it always is. Let's see, let me put some, well, here, let me try this. I'm gonna put a nice purple in there, but let me think about that for a minute. So that's a dark purple. It's not brightly purple. It's just a little bit purple. I've, I've got to decide if I like that or not, but I'll leave it for now. I kind of like it. Okay, I'm going to go up here. Um, you can see in my reference photo that there's a, a tree, you know, a series of tree branches back there, or not branches, um, trunks. I'm not entirely sure that I want to paint those. They're, they may be a little bit distracting, and also the camera's not picking up those uh, the proper shades there. So I'm not going to paint it the way it is, but I am going to use that as a, a reference point. Sorry for the sound. I'm, I'm moving around, so it's not going to be consistent, the sound. I'm going to do some just little... You know, I, I use this word a lot, but just indicators, impressions of, of what's back there. And I'm going to put them in places that I think will be interesting without being distracting. So I am following kind of that, but I'm being, I'm trying to be aware of what I'm doing and how that's going to affect the whole composition. I don't want it too repetitive. Let's see, i move it that way instead, more like the real thing. So maybe I will just kind of paint it more like that, but as far as positioning, but not make it as, as dark. Okay, easy enough. Here, I'll go ahead and show you my palette. Don't get dizzy. I'm gonna mix up. I never, I almost never wash my brush. Because whatever color happens to be on there is usually gonna be just fine. And the only time I really clean my brushes is when I'm going to a brand new, like really pure clean color. Like if I need a pure clean white, or a derivative of that, or a nice, um, nice bright blue sky. But in this case, I'm just gonna let some of that purple get in there because I don't necessarily need a bright, bright color back here anyway. And I'm just gonna scrub this in. Maybe I'll 
get a little bit more. Oh, sorry, didn't even show you what I was doing. Well, now you see the effect of it. Just scrubbing it in. I'm not being random here. It kind of looks like I'm being random. I'm just, I'm not just doing uh, leaves back there. I'm trying to create in my imagination a, a little bit of a scene. You know, imagining what what parts just are in shadow. What what trees might be reaching over and casting shadows on themselves or on other trees. Um, You know, I'm not I'm not really going with with what's really there, but I am using the photo as as a starting point. I'm basically using the photo as like oh, like if I was in a meeting, <laughs> and the photo is one of the one of the the executives in a meeting. I will take its ideas and decide if that's what's best for the company. The company being the painting. <laughs> I'm, I'm CEO. I get to decide finally, but I'll take those ideas and decide if they're going to work best. Just lights and darks all in that green color family. Ooh. I need to work out a better way to, to video. My hand is absolutely shaking now. I'm holding it up so long. But this won't be too much longer. just want to show you these blocking things. Okay. Yeah, you know, th this is another reason why I don't want, I don't wash my brush. It's because I, I don't know, I guess I've just gotten used to it. Like, if that other color is there, like the that's brown color, it kind of got squished up to the other end of the brush. And I'm okay with it um, being there because it'll sometimes show up accidentally and I can choose to leave it or not. And other times I'm like, oh yeah, I've got that on my brush already. All I have to do is just change the change the angle and it'll it'll be there. Okay, I'll put that in there. A little bit darker. And finally I'll just mix up a brighter color here. So just more of my yellow and blue. Got cad yellow light and ultramarine blue. I also have, um, oh, what is it? Oh, my green. I don't, I like to avoid using my, my green for greens. <laughs> I usually just use my green for, uh, like, oh, Oh, what is the like oceans and uh, certain colors of the sky? I can't think of the the word though. It's more like a turquoise. When it's mixed with white, my green kind of turns into a turquoise on its own anyway. So I'll use it as a modifier for green for blues usually. But I feel like if I use my green for actual greens, like grass and trees, that it gets away from me and uh, becomes too too limey too quickly. So anyway, okay. So at this point, I actually would, um, if not wash my brush completely, at least uh, wipe it off pretty thoroughly. Um, and then I'm gonna go into the whites, and that's why I would need to wash my brush, because I'm going into an entirely different color family, and those whites are gonna be pure, pretty pure. Um, even though they're not pure white, they, they are, I don't want green in them, or, or reds. No. So, anyway, that's how I block in. Um, and if I did a really good job of this block in, I, I won't have to change much. Um, in fact, it's probably impressionistic enough that I can just leave all this background stuff and it reads as what it should be. I don't know if you can see the nuances down here. Hopefully you can. Give you different angles. That's even better. That's how I block in, and then I just use the edge of my brush um, and start doing the details. You can see 
up close how I've started to do that already in the face. I try to, that I don't always do this, but, oh, excuse me, but my favorite paintings of mine are always the ones that use fewer brush strokes to get, to get the details. Um, I kind of, I don't know, it's easier for me to get caught up in doing a really, really detailed face and hands, but I, and I'm usually kind of impressed that it looks like the person or the, you know, the subject that I was painting. I'm like, wow, it's, you know, it looks just like them. But after just a day or two, you know, I'll come back in the studio and see it and it's just like, ah, it just, it's kind of dead. You know, it doesn't have life to it. Whereas if I am able to get a face with just, you know, 20 or 30 brush strokes, um, then it, it's, it's interesting. It's powerful. It's, it's a lot of fun to look at. And so I, I don't know, I, I go back and forth with the way I paint, but, but that's the way I, I love, I, I want to paint like that more, more loose. Um, and so anyway, that's, that's why I, uh, won't go any smaller than, than this bristle brush on this, uh, 12 by 16 panel here, this painting. So anyway, so that's how I get started. That's uh, how I fill in the white parts with uh, with color. <laughs> Smush that colored mud around. Um, I will try to up my game with uh, uh, production quality going forward. I have a nice camera. I have hardly used it. I've had it for a couple years now. I just need to buckle down and get it going. I bought it so that I could do videos. Um, I've got the tripod all put together. I just need to buckle down and do it again. Uh, that's partially why I just did this video spur of the moment. Hope you enjoyed and I will try to be back soon. Um, uh, maybe with better video quality and maybe not. <laughs> Depends on, uh, whether I actually want to do it or if I want to keep on putting it off. <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. I will talk to you again later. Uh, send me your questions. Actually, yes. Do send me your questions. Um, I will take those as jumping off points, uh, maybe make some videos about, um, you know, answering those questions. So uh, that, that'll help me out, give me some subject to talk about instead of just talking about the same things all the time, just painting. All right. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.